Hey guys, welcome to Action Reaction. So this dead battle is a, a very old dead battle, but it's a very popular one too. Like this dead battle is between uh, Batman versus Iron Man, and it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The uh, animation is kind of pixelated, but the voice acting and you know the fight is pretty amazing, and you get to see both go all out. But unfortunately, I'm a DC fan. What <laughs> what can I do? You know, a uh, Batman. Gets it's obliterated. He dies. He dies, okay? Iron Man has too many suits and he has nanotechnology, which uh, is literally like a virus at this point. Like, uh, you know, kills Batman, okay? It's crazy, okay? A lot of people have reacted to it. This is like a mega reaction mashup. So many people reacted to it. So uh, expect so many reactors, okay? The audio might be a little bit out of sync, but it's okay. It's okay. I did it properly, okay? So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. There you go. Batman, DC's vengeful crusader of the night. Iron Man, Marvel's genius billionaire. These two mortal men have used their intellect and determination to take their place alongside gods. And being filthy, stinking rich sure doesn't hurt either. He's whizzing out of boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win. Uh, death battle. First up, 10 years, bro. That's right, he's back. In case you're one of the many psycho supervillains stuck in the city, who would take peace with whatever god he brings you because they won't save you from the goddamn Batman. But before he dressed like a giant rodent and Shorts as meat shields, he was Bruce Wayne, scion of the multi billion dollar company Wayne Enterprises. He's got a tail. Mommy and Daddy got 360 no scope, leaving Bruce with a void inside him that could only be filled by the never ending question of justice. Five years later, Bruce was still bitching about that in the back was born. He would devote his life to perfecting his body and mind to become more than human. He would transcend his own mortality. I do not care to haunt evil dreams till the end of time. Jesus Christ! I feel like Zoloft and therapy would work too, but I mean, okay, whatever works. Batman's resume oh, no. is absurd. He's mastered 127 martial arts, trained in like, stealth and assassination, like and is a super genius with a photographic memory. He's the world's oh, greatest detective. Like how the League of Shadows needs to keep erasing Batman's memories because he keeps finding their secret bases, or the time he found a dead body with no entry or exit wound and a 40-year-old bullet nearby. And somehow determined it must have been fired backwards in time. Despite being a master marksman, escape artist, forensic scientist, mechanical engineer, and ninja, one of Batman's assets stands above the map. He's Bat! Next! Bat poured his billions into technical armor and gadgets for every conceivable situation. If there's one word to describe Batman, it's prepared. Made of reinforced Kevlar and titanium, his back suit can resist knives and gunfire. And he even protected him from this massive explosion. Judging by the size of the detonation, Batman's distance from the epicenter and the surface area of his body, he must have withstood a blast of nearly 60 tons of TNT. His cowl comes with night vision, infrared, and a radio, while his utility belt is chock full of smoke bombs, his tongue is grappling hook and battering, which he can control mid-air and set to explode. It was these tools that allowed Batman to wage his one-man war on crime. But once he got over his HD loner phase, he helped found the Justice League of America in order to bring his personal brand of Bat Justice to the entire world. And Batman's knack for schemes and preparation skyrocketed the match, turning him into the Bat God we all know and mean. Like the time he developed a backup personality that would ensure he functions as Batman in case of a psychological attack that drove him mad. A backup human operating system. Like a computer, but it's his brain. He even has plans tailored to his teammates' weaknesses should they ever go rogue. He's developed contingencies for everything, which is why Bats come prepared with extra right. well, that would make sense, cause Like his nightfall exosuit to battle pain, or the Justice Buster, which he obviously designed to combat the Justice League. 
He even got a final bat suit from his sixth dimensional self that can rewrite your mind. My favorite is his stylish zebra suit, which he wore after getting weird magneto powers. They just made his suit look like this for some reason. He wears also the rainbow Batman suit, I'm not really my own and of course, the bat nipples. Chicks dig the bat nipples. All paid for with the bat credit card. But perhaps his first suit of armor, the one designed to put him on the same level of insane mind-bending power as his lead teammates, is the Hellbat. AKA the single coolest looking thing ever invented! Forged by Superman in the heart of the sun, each member of the Justice League contributed to this monstrous mech's ability. And boy does it show! The Hellbat is absolutely hardcore! <laughs> Made of nanokinetic mesh, it can shapeshift around Batman's body and operates via telepathic. Turn invisible and fire a bat shaped chest laser! And by diverting all the suit's power into his scud of it, he can use the Devastator! But kind of powered by Wonder Woman's strength, physical, and she's strong enough to yank the friggin' Earth around. Shit. So it does have a 95% chance that. of giving old Bats a heart attack. Which he has given himself to save all of Gotham City on at least one occasion. It's that level of insane drive that pushed him to use the Hellbat in his one-man invasion of Apocalypse in order to bring his son back to life. You know, Apocalypse, home to the god of evil himself, Darkseid. Batman stared down the final boss of DC Comics oh, and was actually so kicked his the ass. This is it. incredible. So Considering Darkseid is a strong enough to destroy an entire Superman universe and wants enough to fly play. to the edge of the universe in seconds. Since the DC Universe is significantly larger than our own, that would be over 600 quintillion times the speed of light. Then Dark Side Avatar even took a Shoryuken from Alan Scott, who was amped up from the energy of the multiverse, and Bats cleaned his clock just as hard. But this incalculable strength is drawn from Batman's own life force, specifically his metabolism. Should any fight with the Hellback go on too long, Batman may succumb to its hunger for finishing the fight himself. Or absorb someone else's biomass for fuel. Oh. That works too. Okay. So basically, you'd have to be completely batshit insane to pilot this thing. And bats, uh, is. Yeah, sorry to break it to you, but the grown man that wears his underwear on the outside isn't all there. In keeping with being a perfectionist, though, he's completely aware of this. That's why he does not kill. Because if he did, he understands that he can't trust himself to know when he should have killed the Joker. That man is outsmarted. The nigh omniscient Mitchell defeated his dark counterpart to Batman who laughs and humiliated Superman in a one on one fight. No, wait, that was not him. That one he technically had help. Yeah, that one. Although many of his greatest accomplishments have been aided by his Exceptional prep work and about to say Harley Stranger making a choice spot, and even in the face of Armageddon. Who else would pick the, the Spectre, Spectre, the Angel of Wrath, God's, God's divine judgment in the face, the and then tell him to get, get the hell out of his city? I'll tell you who. Goddamn motherfucking na 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 Batman! My parody has arrived soon. You think I haven't planned for this? You would be forgiven for doubting the destiny of Jesus. You would start. Yeah, because you can add massive praise to that list too. Tony's parents died, leaving the mind-bogglingly brilliant prodigy to inherit a multi-billion-dollar tech movement. With mommy and daddy's purse strings, Tony designed to live it up and down in booze and the ladies, which was problematic considering he made his fortune as part of a military industry. Complex, selling devastating high tech arms to the highest bidder. And Tony got to see his handiwork firsthand when it literally blew up in his face. Tony never had much of a heart to begin with, but after that, he literally had even less. Unlike so many men of weaker spirit, though, Tony refused to give up. He was made of tougher stuff. He was made of iron. So he built himself a robot suit to bust the hell out of there. And when he got back to the good old US of A, he devoted his life to protecting the world from the kinds of weapons he helped make by making an even better robot suit and becoming a superhero. I am a 
building new suits and just making it cool to animate the series. But in a session, over the course of his long career as a founding member of the Avengers, he has constructed dozens of different models, which he can call to him at once like a literal one-man army. Most of his armors come with the same basic toolkit, super strength, massively hypersonic flight, and repulsor blast. Repulsors are extremely dense beams of nuance, unstable subatomic particles, and electrons. They're actually really interesting to see. They're classified as leptons, which don't have any known substructure. It's a laser! Just suck the whole one out of it. His armors also come with onboard AI, like Friday, which can hack into enemy technology, command his other suits to fight remotely, and operate down to the picosecond. That's one trillionth of a second. Seriously. Even outdated armors are strong enough to blow up a chunk of rock as big as Manhattan. Hey, taking a look at its speed, Cody's armor would have had to be hidden with an energy of nearly 300 teratons of TNT. That's three times stronger than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaur. Years spent defending the Earth has conditioned Tony to be prepared for any threat imaginable, and he has an armor for almost any occasion. He's got an armor to bust holes, an armor to bust doors, an armor that can turn intangible, a super tiny armor that can mess with your insides, and an armor made of white sticky alien goo. Definitely not legal in all 50 states. In order to remain as flexible as possible though, his standard go-to is the Model Prime. It has all the classic Iron Man staples and has even incorporated size changing for extra strength, an invisible stealth mode, and a badass lightning samurai sword. Say what you want about the smug son of a bitch, but he's definitely got style. And crippling out but look who's talking! It was more than likely that same Devil May Care attitude that left Tony revealing his secret identity to the world, which I guess had no consequences. Look, Wiz, when you build a space laser strong enough to wipe out alien fleets in one shot, I don't think the Mandarin is going to interrupt your swarm of lunch date. That space laser is a Dyson Sphere, a speculative superstructure that is meant to encircle an entire star and harness its energy. Something only possible by a theoretical type two civilization on the Kardashev scale. It's basically when your galaxy brained enough to draw power from the entire solar system. I know it's comics, but the fact that Tony just has one of these lying around is insane. Known as Soul's Hammer, Tony's incomplete sphere is strong enough to destroy a planet at only a 2% charge. Do you work on one of those? I remember you talking about how it'd solve your student loan problems once and for all. On behalf of the families of several planets that no longer exist, I'm not legally at liberty to discuss that. Years of protecting the world from aliens, gods, and even his friends. All of that stuff wore Tony down and turned him into the one thing he promised himself he would never become. A narc. Siding with U.S. government's enforcement of the Superhuman Registration Act led to a literal civil war between superheroes. It wouldn't be his last. Though it did prove he could hang with the best of them. He's beaten Captain America in hand-to-hand -hand combat, survived the most of the war, and even took down the World Breaker Hulk. He even matched Magneto. Magneto, the guy that controls metal, the thing that surrounds Tony's entire body, by amplifying his power with Jupiter's magnetic field. And then Max punched it with the power of the sun, and it was like, no big deal. There really doesn't seem to be a limit to how insane Tony's tech gets. In the movies, this is the same guy that figured out time travel just shit around one evening. In the time it takes me to down a beer, Tony's already shattered the laws of physics. Yeah, sure, go to the Middle Ages. Play nights with Dr. Doom, scam. Perhaps his greatest invention of all, however, was the e-skate, an entire virtual universe where the only limit is his imagination. And because Tony's nothing if not predictable, he made an armor out of it. That's right, he made an armor out of a universe. This virtual armor is composed of solid holograms that can form any weapon Tony can think of. But even this weapon cannot compare to the armor Tony invented inside the e-skate. The Godbuster. But after that, he it's literally Iron Man going, going Super Saiyan. Saiyan. The Godbuster was so powerful, it destroyed the entire Escape in a single blast, along with the AI controlling all of it. An earlier iteration of the Godbuster was able to stand up to Celestials, 
cosmic gods that can warp reality, like Galactus, Odin, and Franklin, who can threaten the multiverse with their power. Oh, it lives up to the friggin' name in case you were wondering. But it isn't that kind of power that makes Tony special. After a life spent wallowing in vice and pleasure, Tony rebuilt himself into a man he could be proud of. Someone who could sacrifice everything to save the world. I suppose I'm going to show you the man of life at a heart. You know, yours will be on there just fine. I have it. 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 I now, I can respect a man with a healthy sense of paranoia and a billion to spare, but Steve and Nat are really up my ass about this. Take the watchtower offline now. Bruce. You don't want this fight, Tony. It'll be the biggest mistake of your life. Right, do you read me? The watchtower is being attacked. Seriously, Bats? I figured out hacking in the second grade. How do you think I got in here? Besides, oh my god. Really, bros? This thick? I thought what did you expect? I am Batman. Oh. Model 58, the Nano Armor. Snuck it into your body back on the watchtower. Friday, initiate self-destruct. Friday, I could really use a drink. Well, Batman is a character defined by his tenacity, preparedness, and utter genius. It was Tony Stark, so neither could rely on that skill set alone to pull them through. And it shouldn't come as a surprise. Batman's standard Batsuit couldn't quite hold up to the firepower of even the most basic Iron Man armor. The Batsuit is surprisingly tough, sure, but it isn't taking hits from a dude that can punch apart Manhattan. And despite Bats having a ton of nifty gadgets, Iron Man's armors were way more varied and powerful. 
horrible. With so many unique and up and alien abilities, there was no way Bats could predict all of them. With time, you could certainly figure out a plan of attack, but since Tony is just as much a genius schemer as Batman, he could do the same. There are lots of cases where he would have won, especially with his ace of the hole, the Hellbat. The Hellbat's raw power and speed absolutely dwarfed the majority of Iron Man's arsenal, and could have killed him immediately were it not for Tony's own trump card. Like the Godbuster, which was definitely strong enough to contend with it. The Hellbat could take on Darkseid, but a weaker version of the Godbuster could hold its own against Celestial. Darkseid was a being capable of wrecking the multiverse with his power and moving many times faster than light, but the Celestials were capable of the same. With an armor that strong, Tony could buy himself enough time to break out all his other tricks, like sneaking nano armors into Batman's body, phasing through him with ghost tech, draining the Hellbat's power, or just hacking his suit and shutting it off. And with an army of armors at his beck and call, Tony could certainly hold Batman off long enough to employ those strategies. Hell, I wish he could control them remotely. He technically didn't even need to be there and put himself in his way. And remember, the Hellbat used Batman's own life force as a yeah, I knew that was he needed to end the fight quick or else his own armor would kill him first. Oh With Tony throwing an army at him, he didn't have a good way of doing that. Tony just had way too much shit to throw at Batman, while Batman didn't have the time or options he needed to keep up. Batman may have been a god among men, but Iron Man's wealth of gadgets, insanely powerful tech, and greater mechanical experience allowed him to crush the Cape Crusader. You might think it's an injustice that Batman's gonna need a vengeance, but Iron Man was in a whole nother league. The winner is Iron Man. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you're looking for something else to watch, we just released a great new show called Last Laugh and Your Teeth. It's all about people trying to make each other laugh and congratulations. Check it out, look in the box below. Thanks.